Charles Leclerc is hailed as one of F1's most promising talents, a young and talented driver destined for greatness. But winning an F1 championship is no easy feat, adding a lot of pressure, as we'll see later. Will Charles ever win a championship? That's what we'll discover today. Let's dive in. Like most drivers in F1, Charles has been racing for almost his entire life. In 2005, when he was 8 years old, Charles began his karting career. And let's just say, it started with a bang. Charles won the French province Alpes Côte d'Or championship, or more commonly referred to as the Southern Region Championship, in 2005, 2006, and 2008. In 2009, he became the French Cadet Champion, in 2010, the Junior Monaco Kart Cup Champion, and in 2011, he won the KF3 World Cup, Karting Academy Trophy, and the ERDF Junior Kart Masters. I could keep going, but to cover his karting success, I would need to dedicate an entire video. Instead, let's move on to Charles' single-seater career. Leclerc graduated to single-seater kart in 2014, entering the Formula Renault 2.0 Alps with British team Fortec Motorsports. During this stint of his career, Charles encountered a lot of well-known characters. Who, you ask? Stay tuned to discover the answer. Charles ended the 2014 season as Formula Renault 2.0 Junior Champion, as well as runner-up in the Drivers' Championship behind another very talented driver. This outstanding season would go on to land him a spot in the F3 European Championship for the upcoming season. In 2015, Charles replaced a 17-year-old Max Verstappen at Van Amersfoort Racing, as the latter took a gigantic leap from F3 to F1. Speaking of Verstappen and Leclerc, there's a rather intriguing fact between the two, something that will be revealed later on in the video. Charles proceeded to win the Rookies' Championship, beating a few familiar names such as George Russell, Lance Stroll, and Alex Albon. And for the Drivers' Championship, Charles earned himself a commendable fourth place. The following year, Charles transitioned to the GP3 series, where he joined ART Grand Prix alongside Alex Albon and Nick de Vries. He also joined the Ferrari Driver Academy, the impact of which we'll get into later. Charles would again go on to win a championship this year, becoming the GP3 Drivers' Champion. Are you seeing a pattern yet? In 2017, the year prior to taking the biggest leap of his career, Charles had a season in F2. Despite facing a personal tragedy, the loss of his father during the 2017 season, Charles remained undeterred and achieved exceptional results. He claimed the F2 championship in his rookie season with an impressive 57-point lead, making him the youngest ever F2 champion at just 19 years and 356 days old, and ended the season with a 72-point margin. His ability to persevere and deliver dominant drives even amidst grief truly highlight his potential as a future champion. Finally, the promised future world champion had arrived in F1, but things would prove to be more complex than he could have imagined. Charles' journey in Formula 1 began in 2016, with his entry into the Ferrari Driver Academy. In addition to his GP3 campaign, Leclerc took on the role of development driver for both Haas and Ferrari. This led him to participating in two F1 practice sessions driving for Haas. In the following year, Leclerc showcased his potential during the mid-season Hungoring test, where he took the wheel of the Ferrari SF70H. His remarkable performance caught the attention of F1 legend Kimi Raikkonen, who praised Leclerc's ability to excel in a different car than what he was used to. Raikkonen expressed confidence in Leclerc's future, stating that the young driver had displayed great prowess and was destined for greatness in the sport. In 2018, Leclerc secured a race driver position with the Sauber F1 team, taking over from Pascal Verlein and partnering with Marcus Ericsson. This marked a significant moment, as it was the first time that a Monegasque driver had competed in Formula 1 since Olivia Beretta in 1994. So, how did Leclerc's rookie season in F1 go? You guessed it, it was quite impressive. At his fourth Grand Prix in Baku, Charles finished sixth, becoming the second Monegasque driver to ever score points in F1, the first being Louis Chiron all the way back in 1950. Charles would go on to score points in 10 of the 21 races in the 2018 F1 season. Not only did he get consistent points, but he also outqualified his teammate Marcus Ericsson in an astonishing 17 races. Not bad for a rookie, right? 
So, what we've gathered thus far is that Charles Leclerc is a very impressive driver. Now we're left wondering, where did it all go wrong? The answer is actually quite simple. I'm joking, of course. The answer is actually not that simple. But it has to be noted that Ferrari as a team have not exactly impressed in the past decade. Can they ever get back to their best? Let's find out. Ferrari hasn't won a driver's championship since 2007, nor a constructor's championship since 2008. That's 15 years without a championship. To put it into perspective, the last time Ferrari won a championship, Marvel released its first MCU movie, Iron Man, and Barack Obama was elected as President of the United States for the first time. Since then, Ferrari has seen its fair share of extremely talented drivers – Fernando Alonso, Kimi Raikkonen, Felipe Massa, and Sebastian Vettel. Most teams will be dying to employ drivers of this caliber. So how did Ferrari fail to win a championship with any of them? Safe to say, the skill of their drivers is not the problem. Again, we would need to dedicate an entire video to discuss everything that's happened within the team the past 15 years. But for this video, we'll focus on the four years that Charles has been with the team. Let's dive in. Starting off with Leclerc's first season with Ferrari in 2019, in which he impressed quite a lot. Ferrari came into the season off the back of a title charge, if you could call it that. Considering this, they were expected to at least be competitive again, but this turned out not to be the case. A lot of questions were asked regarding their car's performance, as it was quickly determined that they had a hard time fighting for wins. Ferrari's then-team principal, Mattia Bonotto, stated that they got the design of the car rule wrong. Keep this in mind, as it's something that you'll hear many more times by the end of this video. In 2019, there were regulation changes aimed at improving overtaking. This meant that all teams were required to design an entirely new front wing and bargeboard area. These changes rendered the progress that Ferrari made since 2017 useless. useless. Ferrari tried a very experimental front wing design, whilst their rivals had a more traditional approach, which turned out to be the right choice. This led to Ferrari's car being very track-specific for tracks with long straights, but when challenging for a title, you need your car to be on top of its game on every track. Getting back to Leclerc, in only a second race with Ferrari, Charles managed to get himself on the podium in Bahrain, as well as the fastest lap of the race. He managed consistent results throughout the season, ending up with eight podiums and two wins, ultimately beating four-time world champion Sebastian Vettel. Quite impressive for a driver in his second season of F1. The pressure of driving for Ferrari is absolutely huge, but by all accounts, Charles seemed to manage fine. Probably because he was up against an F1 legend and no one really expected him to beat Vettel. These expectations would change in a few years, however, something that we'll get into soon enough. The season wasn't without its share of drama, however. Team orders, combined with the bullheadedness of F1 drivers, ultimately resulted in a collision at the Brazilian Grand Prix, further straining relations within the team. Binotto also claimed that Ferrari was a new and young team, especially in the key roles, and considering what we're about to get into, this might not be that wild of a statement. 2020 would turn out to be their worst season since 1980, where they finished 10th out of 11 teams. In 2020, Ferrari experienced a huge drop in engine performance. Without getting too technical, we can say that the biggest factor of this drop was the issuance of technical directives by the FIA regarding the monitoring and control of fuel flow. This led to the team being, on average, 10 kilometers an hour, or 6 miles per hour for the Americans and Brits watching, slower than in 2019. Instead of focusing on developing this year's car, Ferrari turned their attention to 2021. With the lack of development combined with the poor engine performance, the team struggled to even break into the top five, finishing sixth in the Constructors' Championship. Despite this, Leclerc managed two podiums in an otherwise horrific season. At the end of 2020, it was revealed that Sebastian Vettel would be replaced by Carlos Sainz in 2021. What this would mean for Leclerc is something that we'll get into soon. Despite the supposed strained relationship between Vettel and Leclerc, Sebastian left a heartwarming goodbye message for Charles. At the final race of the season, he gave him his helmet with a text saying, To Charles, you are the most talented driver I came across in 15 years of F1. Don't waste it. Whatever you do to be happy and smile. Thanks for everything, Seb. 
That's some high praise from a four-time world champion. And let's not forget that a few years earlier, he caught the attention of world champion Kimi Raikkonen as well. Moving on to the 2021 season, Ferrari managed to improve quite a lot. They aimed to finish third in the Constructors' Championship and succeeded in doing so. Leclerc and Sainz managed to score 192.5 points more than the season before, and the gap to the front was reduced from 1.3 seconds per lap to 0.6 seconds, marking a huge step forward. They had more top 10 finishes than any other team, scoring in 17 out of 22 races. So, Ferrari showed huge potential, and the development of the power unit helped them secure P3 in the standings. And getting back on top is a step-by-step -step process, as seen with Red Bull. Was the young team that Binotto talked about ready to fight for a championship? To find out the answer, we have to move on to 2022. The time has come. Ferrari and Charles Leclerc have a car that is capable of fighting for a title. As the season opener arrived, Leclerc took pole position in Bahrain, 1.3 tenths ahead of rival and reigning champion Max Verstappen. During the race, Charles and Max engaged in a competitive battle, overtaking each other multiple times, showing that Charles has the guts to fight in the front. Verstappen eventually came out on top, but faced power unit issues and had to retire from the race. This led to Charles leading the championship by 25 points, a lead that would extend to 46 points after three race weekends. But that lead would quickly disappear. After 13 races, Ferrari got hit with a reality check. Verstappen now led the championship by 80 points, a 126-point swing in 10 races. How did this happen? The turning point came in the fourth round at Imola. After two wins and a second place in the three opening rounds, Charles was comfortably running in third, chasing second position to claim yet another podium. However, on lap 53, Charles made an error, seeing him drop down to ninth after a pit stop. Leclerc recovered to a sixth position, claiming eight points. But the points lost were a mere fraction compared to what was truly lost, his confidence. In the 10 coming rounds, Charles would only see one win and one podium. These rounds would not only put Charles' ability to the test, but also his team's. Only a few races in 2022 came down to the Ferrari F175's performance versus Red Bull's RB18. The rest came down to strategy or driver errors. In Monaco, Leclerc led in wet conditions but was undercut thanks to a rather odd call from the strategist. This happened two times during the race, causing Charles to finish P4 instead of P1. At Silverstone, Leclerc had a great race, but during a late safety car, Ferrari kept him out on used hard tires. Everybody behind him pitted for fresh softs, resulting in Charles falling down to fourth. All of these issues added pressure to Leclerc and the team, culminating at the French Grand Prix. Charles was leading the race, 10 seconds in front of the driver behind, showing that the car still had pace to win. That was until lap 18, when yet another driver error caused the loss of 25 points. Charles spun out of the lead out of nowhere and put the car into the wall, ultimately retiring. At this point, Charles was only 38 points behind leader Max Verstappen, and winning this race could get him back on track for a title charge. Instead, the lead would extend to 63 points, solidifying Verstappen's position as favorite to win the championship. By the 15th round, Charles was 109 points behind Verstappen, and the championship was by all means over. over. What's interesting, though, is that Shell managed six podiums in the last eight races. The car was still fast enough, so Red Bull didn't win by running away in the development race. The title hopes were gone, and so was the pressure. Does this mean that Leclerc won't ever win a championship? Maybe. The trust within the team seems to be broken, broken. something that we've also seen in 2023. There's such a big contrast when looking at Verstappen and his engineer, GP, and looking at the Ferrari engineers with their drivers. It just gives you a feeling that something is not quite right within the team. Confidence plays a crucial role in a driver's performance, and currently Charles' confidence doesn't seem to be quite there. His raw talent and speed is evident, as seen in his junior career and debut year at Sauber. We've covered three key reasons as to why Charles' career seems to have gone downhill. Number one is the fact that he is up against arguably one of the best drivers ever, Max Verstappen. Compared to Leclerc, Verstappen very rarely, if ever, makes mistakes, even under pressure. This is something that Charles is yet to show. A fun fact, or sad fact depending on whether you're a Ferrari fan, is that Max Verstappen has more wins for Leclerc's poles than Charles himself. Do with that information as you will. 
Number two is the Ferrari team struggling to create championship winning cars. Since Leclerc joined the team, Ferrari have only been able to fight for the championship once. If they're able to win in the future, only time will tell. Number three is the fact that Charles really seems to struggle when under pressure, along with his team. This forces them into mistakes, something that champions can't afford. These reasons combined have put Charles' confidence in a downward spiral. A once prominent talent on the grid now finds himself overshadowed by another upcoming rookie. As a fan of Leclerc, I really hope he can regain his confidence and win a championship. Whether that's with Ferrari or someone else, I can't tell. But the limitations of his current team have to be noted. I would love it if you left a comment sharing your thoughts on Leclerc and if you think he can ever win a championship. If you made it this far into the video, a like would be greatly appreciated. And if you want more content like this, don't hesitate to subscribe. Until next time.